Hello children. Welcome to another session of digital classes of intermediate English. Today we are going to look at poetry. We are going to learn a poem titled A Red Red Rose written by Robert Byrne. Let's take a look at the poet. Robert Byrne is a Scottish poet and lyricist. He is widely regarded as the national poet of Scotland and is celebrated worldwide. His best known writings are in Scottish language, but he has also written many poems in standard English. He is also credited with pioneering the Romantic movement. So, as I told you, this poem, A Red Red Rose, is the best, one of the best lyrics of English poetry. Do you know what a lyric is? Lyric is nothing but a poetry that focuses on emotions or thoughts rather than telling a story. You know there are many poems which talk about somebody or which tell us a story. Unlike those poems, a lyrical poem is a poem that focuses on emotions or thoughts of a poet or a speaker. Now, the name lyric comes from the Greek word. Now, which means songs accompanied by a lyre. A lyre is a musical instrument. Dear children, you can see that in the picture given there. Lyric poems tend to be melodious, created by use of rhyme, rhythm, alliteration, onomatopoeia, etc. Poem is a lyrical poem. Lyrical poem is a lyrical poem. Emotions are a lyrical poem. So, this lyric poem is a lyric word. Greek word is a lyric word. The song is a lyric instrument. The instrument is a lyric word. So, lyric poems are very melodious and very melodious sound type and the rhyme, rhythm, alliteration, onomatopoeia and poetic devices are also written. So, now let's read the poem children. A Red Red Rose by Robert Byrne. My love is like a red red rose that's newly sprung in June. My love is like the melody that's sweetly played in tune. As fair are though my bony lad, so deep in love am I. And I will love thee still, my dear, till all the seas gang dry. Till all the seas gang dry, my dear, and the rocks melt with the sun. And I will love thee still, my dear, while the sands of life shall run. And fare thee well, my only love. And fare thee well a while, and I will come again, my love, though it were ten thousand miles. So, this is the poem, children. You can see the poem is written in 16 lines, and it is divided into four stanzas each. Can you identify rhyming words in each stanza? You put manu chadukuna poem ere teundo. This is 16 lines and this 16 lines and this 16 lines and this 4 stanzas can divide it. In this 4 stanzas, there are 1 stanza of rhyming words. What do you want to identify? So, stanza 1, stanza 2, stanza 3, stanza 4. Stanza 1 is rhyming words. Second line, last word is the fourth line, last word. The second line, last word, and the fourth line, last word. If you can see, they are rhyming with each other. You know what a rhyming word is, isn't it, children? Okay, the last letter of the word should sound just like the other word. Okay, so here you have June and tune rhyming with each other in stanza one. Now, if you take a look at stanza two. You can see that I in the second line of the stanza 2 is rhyming with dry. So, the rhyming words in second stanza are I and dry. 
Now let's move on to the third stanza. In the third stanza, if you see, sun is rhyming with run. The second line has the last word as sun, and in the fourth line again, you have the last word as run. So these two words are rhyming with each other. That is sun and run. Now let's lay, take a look at the last stanza, wherein you find while rhyming with my. So the second line in the star, uh, fourth stanza, the last word is while, which is rhyming with mile in the last line, last word. Okay, children. So let's read the poem once again. My love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. My love is like the melody that sweetly played in tune. As fair are though my bony lass, so deep in love am I. And I will love thee still, my dear, till all the seas can dry. So, dear children, if you take a look at the first stanza, you can see the words like, like are used. That is nothing but the poet is comparing. Okay, a comparison is made by the poet and he is comparing his beloved, that is his lover or rather his love. So, wherever he is comparing, he used the word like there. Take a look at the words there again. Like a red, red rose. So, the comparison of his lover is made to a red rose. And next, in the third stanza, if you can see, the poet is again comparing his beloved to the melody. That's a melodious song. Now, when you see the second stanza, so, you can see that the poet is trying to assure or tell how deeply he loves his beloved and he makes promises about his everlasting love. Similarly, in the third stanza also, he continues to make promises of his eternal love and he compares his eternal love with certain images. And then in the last stanza, if you can see, dear children, he is bidding farewell to his beloved. That doesn't mean that he won't be meeting her again. He is giving an assurance that this farewell or this parting is only for a few years and he will be back again. Let's take a look at the stanza word summary of this particular poem. Let me read stanza one for you, dear children. Oh, my love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh. My love is like the melody that sweetly played in tune. Now, if you see, here he is comparing his love. As we've already discussed, he is comparing his love to a rose and especially to a newly sprung rose and that too in the month of June. You know, June is the month where we have showers, right? The first showers or the monsoon showers begin in the month of June. So, here you will see that the entire nature will actually regrow or take rebirth and it, it will become very fresh. So, the freshness of a red rose, the brightness of the red rose is compared to his beloved. So, her beauty and her youth is compared to a freshly sprung rose, a newly blossomed rose here. And the next comparison that he makes is a melody that is a melodious song that is so soothing to our ears. He says that when you play a melodious song in a very sweet tune, it will be very, very wonderful and soothing. Just like that, his beloved is also very beautiful, he says. So, children, you can take a look at the words here. The word L-U-V-E is love, which is actually in a Scottish dialect. That is, the poet is from Scotland. Therefore, he used certain words which are in Scottish dialect. Similarly, take a look at the meanings of the words like sprung, which means bloomed or blossomed, and melody is nothing but a pleasant tune. So, we could manage to say that stanza one law, poet tana lover ni ok beautiful rose. June low, monsoon time low, fresh year, because in China, the rose flower to be competitive. 
ఇంకా దేంతో కంపేర్ చేస్తున్నాడు హీఈస్ ఆల్సో కంపేరింగ్ తను ఒక మధురమైన పాట అంటే చాలా మధురంగా ఉన్న ఒక పాటతోటి కంపేర్ చేస్తున్నాడు ఒక మంచి పాట మంచి ట్యూన్ లో ఉన్న పాట విన్నప్పుడు మనకి ఎంత సంతోషం కలుగుతుందో ఎంత బాగుంటుందో అలాగే తన బిలవర్డ్ కూడా అంత బాగుంటుంది అంటే షీఈస్ ఆల్సో లైక్ దాట్ దాట్ ఈస్ వాట్ హీఈస్ కంపేరింగ్ ఇక్కడ మనం చూసినట్టయితే ఎల్యూవి లవ్ అని యూజ్ చేసి ఉంది యాక్చువల్లీ ఎల్యూవి లవ్ అనేది ద పోయెట్ ఈ పోయెట్ ఎవరైతే ఉన్నాడో అతను స్కాట్లాండ్ కి చెందిన వాడు హీస్ అ స్కాటిష్ పోయెట్ సో అతని స్లాంగ్ లో అంటే అతని డైలెక్ట్ లో ఎల్యూవి అని రాసాడు యాక్చువల్లీ ఇట్ మీన్స్ ఎల్యూవి లవ్ ఓకే అండ్ ఇంకా వేరే రెండు మీనింగ్స్ కూడా ఇక్కడ ఉన్నాయి చూడండి స్ప్రంగ్ అంటే బ్లూమ్ వికసించిన అని మెలోడీ అంటే ప్లెసెంట్ ట్యూన్ ఒక మంచి స్వరం లేదా ఒక మంచి పాట అని అర్థం the first lines compared the speaker's love to a red red rose saying the beloved is like a rose newly sprung in june emphasizes it emphasizes it is giving importance to her beauty and youth and later he compares his beloved to a melody that is sweetly played in tune so here you can see the newness and excitement in the speaker's love initially Now let's take a look at the second stanza. As fair art thou, my bony lass, so deep in love am I, and I will love thee still, my dear, till all the seas gang dry. So here you can see that in the first line, the poet is really comparing the beauty of his beloved to an art piece. He says, as fair art thou, that means you are so fair and beautiful, just like a piece of art and he says and he addresses the poor beloved as my bony lass this expression is usually used in old english literature which means a pretty happy young woman so here in the first stanza you you have to read it the other way round which means my bony lass that is my pretty young lady you are as fair or though you are so fair as a a piece of art and that is the reason i am so deep in love with you so he says so deep in love am i so he says that i am deeply in love with you and and my love is so deep for you that i will love thee till my dear that means i am going to love you my dear till all the seas gang dry so he says that my love for you will last forever my love will last till all the waters in the seas go dry that means the poet says that his love is never ending and everlasting so take a look at the meanings once again bony as i already told you means pretty and happy lass is a young lady or a young woman the is actually used in old english dear children which means you and gang is also a dialect a scottish dialect which means go so manam second stanza chusinataite ikkada poet tana beloved gurinchi cheptunadu malli em anipistunadu my bony lass ante enti my pretty young lady you as fair art thou nu enta andanga unnav ante you are like a piece of art inka em anipistunadu nenu ninnu entaga ishtapadutunnanu ante that నా నా లవ్ ఏదైతే ఉందో లాస్ట్ అంటే సముద్రంలో ఉన్న నీళ్ళంతా ఆవిరయ్యే వరకు ఐ విల్ బి లవ్ ఇన్ యూ అని చెప్తున్నాడు అనమాట అంటే ఏంటి ద పోయిట్ ఇస్ రీట్రేటింగ్ హిస్ ఇటర్నల్ లవ్ టు హిస్ ద లవ్ ఇట్ హియర్ ఓకే సో హీ ఇస్ ఎంఫసైజింగ్ హౌ లాంగ్ దిస్ లవ్ విల్ లాస్ట్ ఓకే అండ్ హీ ఇస్ యూజింగ్ ఇమేజెస్ ఇన్ ఆర్డర్ టు రీట్రేట్ హిస్ ఎవర్ లాస్టింగ్ లవ్ అంటే ఏంటి తన లవ్ ఎప్పటికీ అలాగే ఉండిపోతుంది అని చెప్పడానికి కొన్ని ఇమేజెస్ కొన్ని కంపారిజన్స్ యూజ్ చేస్తున్నాడు ఈ ఈ పర్టికులర్ స్టాండ్స్లో ఏం కంపారిజన్ యూజ్ చేశాడు సముద్రంలో ఉన్న నీళ్ళన్నీ ఆవిరయ్యే వరకు నేను నిన్ను ఇష్టపడుతూ ఉంటాను అని చెప్తున్నాడు విచ్ మీన్ దాట్ యు నో దాట్ విల్ నెవర్ హ్యాపెన్ ఆర్ ఇట్ విల్ టేక్ అ వెరీ లాంగ్ టైమ్ టు హ్యాపెన్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ నెక్స్ట్ ఇంపాసిబుల్ డే చిల్డ్రన్ విచ్ మీన్స్ దాట్ ద పోయిట్ ఇస్ ఎ షోరింగ్ హిస్ బిలవర్డ్ దాట్ his love is everlasting okay let's take a look at third stanza till all the seas can dry my dear 
and the rocks melt with the sun. I will love thee still, my dear, while the sands of life shall run. So we've already discussed that the poet is making comparisons or using images to tell or express his everlasting love. Isn't that children? So here you can see that he is reiterating once again saying that, you know, till all the seas go dry, I will love you. And then the next comparison or the image that he is using is the rock melt with the sun. So is it possible for the sun to melt the rock? It is almost near to impossible or it may take very long time. So this shows that the poet's love is uh, eternal, it is everlasting and he makes one more comparison and that is sands of time. That is time may fade away, time may go on but my love for you will never fade away. So dear children, again take a look at uh, the words given here, O which is nothing but again a Scottish dialect for O. And WI, which means with. So let's move on to the stanza four. And fare thee well, my only love, and fare thee well a while. And I'll come again, my love, though it were 10,000 miles. So here you can see that the poet is going somewhere on a long journey and he's bidding farewell to his beloved. So he's saying that, fare thee well, my only love. He says, Oh, my love, farewell to you. That is, Bye for now. Goodbye for now. And it is just for a while. That is, it's only for a short period of time. I will come again, my love. He assures that he will come back again. And then he says that, though it were 10,000 miles, even though I'm going to travel 10,000 miles away from you, I'm assuring you that I will come back again. So, stands a four lo manu jusna taite. Poet, తన లవర్ నుంచి దూరంగా వెళ్ళిపోతున్నాడు వెళ్ళిపోతూ తనకి ఫేర్వెల్ ఇస్తున్నాడు ఏమని కొంత సమయానికి మాత్రమే నేను మీకు దూరంగా వెళ్తున్నాను అండ్ మళ్ళీ నేను తిరిగి వస్తాను నేను మేబీ టెన్ థౌజండ్ మైల్స్ దూరంగా వెళ్తున్నానేమో కానీ తప్పకుండా తిరిగి వస్తానని చెప్తున్నాడు అనమాట ఓకే సో ఇక్కడ మనం చూసినట్టయితే ద పోయట్ వాంట్స్ టు టెల్ ఏం చెప్తున్నాడు అంటే టైం కానీ డిస్టెన్స్ కానీ ఎప్పుడు కూడా ఇట్ విల్ నాట్ రియలీ um you know hinder or affect a true love so the poet here would like to tell us that you know the length of his journey or the length of time will never fade away true love so children this is about the stanza wise summary of the poem so let us conclude the complete poem so if you can see that here the poet is making comparisons he is giving in stanzas and images and finally he would like to tell his beloved one point and what is that that his love is reliable and constant and it is also fresh and exciting enough to add it to the change the circumstances so the moment of four farewell in the final stanza also highlights the speaker's core argument that you know love that lasts forever is also love that allows for change over time so మనం చూసినట్టయితే పోయట్ ఇందులో ఏం చెప్తున్నాడు తన లవ్ చాలా ప్యూర్ అండ్ అలాగే ఉంటుంది టైం కానీ డిస్టెన్స్ కానీ తన ప్రేమని ఎలాంటి మార్పు తీసుకురాలేవని చెప్తున్నాడు ఇంకొకటి పోయట్ ఇందులో ఏం చెప్తున్నాడు అంటే సో లవ్ దట్ లాస్ట్ ఫర్ ఎవర్ దట్ ఇస్ ఎటర్నల్ లవ్ అంటే ఏంటంటే ఇట్ షుడ్ చేంజ్ అకార్డింగ్ టు ది టైమ్ లవ్ షుడ్ నాట్ చేంజ్ బట్ ఇట్ షుడ్ అడాప్ట్ టు ద చేంజెస్ దిస్ ఇస్ ఆల్ అబౌట్ ది పోయట్ చూపి Now let's take a look at the literary devices which are used in this particular poem. This poem is used in the same way, but it is used in literary devices used in that poem. That way, it is used in the same way. So, in this particular poem, as we have already discussed, it is a lyrical poem and the lyrical poem will have repetition, simile, hyperbole, imagery. All these are also used in this particular poem. So, you know what is a simile? When you make a comparison using like or as, then it is called as a simile. So dear children, if you see, in this particular poem, the poet compares his beloved to a red, red rose. And let us take a look at that sentence. My love is like a red, red rose. So we can take this as an example for simile here. Okay, now let's move on to next uh, uh, imagery or 
the next poetic device that is used that is hyperbole so it is a literary device which you know uh, used to exaggerate something that is uh, a comparison that is not normal at all okay so you can see here that you know in order to compare his everlasting love the poet uses images such as till all the seas go dry so which is almost impossible or an exaggeration so we can say that the poet has used hyperbole here so next you can see that a lot of repetitions are also used in this particular poem so let me tell you what is repetitions are so a repetition is nothing but it refers to the use of the same word or phrase multiple times many times did you come across that in this particular poem of course we did isn't it and it was i'm just giving you a few examples a fair will be i love you deep till and oh my love all these things are repetitions for children and there are many more poetic devices which are used in this so give it a try and try to identify them so children before i conclude this poem i would like to tell you a few things about why only red rose is used as a symbol of love so roses were already associated with love much earlier so it dates back to the greek greek uh, mythological character aphrodite so aphrodite the greek goddess of love she often used to wear roses round her neck feet and head so moreover from the blood of her lover adonis grew a rose bush when he died so in this mythological story rose doesn't mean just love it means eternal love that is love that will last forever love that never has any end so children i hope you all understood the poem here is a small assignment for you take a look at it so i want you to read the poem once again try to identify some more poetic devices that are used in this poem and also try to answer the annotations on your own okay children having learnt about the poem let me take you through the annotations that you will be attempting in the exam annotations will be quite new to you because you have not attempted them so far so annotations are nothing but a few sentences or lines from the poem which are picked up and given to you in the paper so here is an example children take a look at it oh my love is like a red red rose that's newly sprung in june so these are the two sentences that are given from the poem that we have done just now so when such a annotation is given to you in the exam so first you need to write the introduction introduction is nothing but you need to write the whereabouts of the poem that is uh, from which poem this uh, lines are given and who is the poet so here take a look at it introduction part this couplet is taken from the poem a red red rose written by robert burns it is one of the best lyrics of english poetry so having written introduction you have to move to the context that is in which situation or where does these lines appear in the poem so the poem is an address to the speaker's love lover to whom he felt eternal love in this particular context the poet compares his love to a rose so this is the context that was written for these two lines then next you need to write the meaning of this line so here we go children the speaker begins by using a simile to compare his love to a rose he says that his love is like a newly sprung rose in june his love is fresh and bursting with life so this is how you need to attempt the annotations dear children similarly we have three more annotations in the same poem so the second one is oh my love is like a melody that sweetly played in tune then third one is and i will love thee still my dear till all the seas can dry and fare thee well my only love and fare thee well a while so dear children read the poem once again and try to answer these annotations so before we conclude here is a small assignment for you dear children read the poem once again try to identify some poetic devices that are used in the poem 
and try to answer the anu questions on your own remember we have already discussed one so the remaining three i would like you to answer and also try to answer the questions that are given at the end of the poll that's all for now children thank you